never seen this in a movie before. Kind of groundbreaking. I knew I was a filmmaker before I knew I was a girl. You're so pretty. Why are you doing this? The Nazi salute is just a, you know, but like slightly, because I speak for the entire trans community. There's your fucking clickbait title. How hypersensitive I've been back. Whoa, well, girl. Oh, I'm neoliberal. I'm colorblind. Please use all of this. Welcome to Emotional Labor. This is the show where we do the disco so you don't have to. I'm joined today by director, writer, performer of The People's Joker, Vera Drew. Thank you for having me. I woke up really early from a nightmare, actually, because I've been having like a lot of nightmares lately that like would make good movies, but this one was just so mundane, just like a bad day at work. So I'm coming in with a little bit of that energy, but for the most part, it's been a good morning. I spent most of it writing my favorite thing to do. The People's Joker is the first film to show that a parent making your transness about them is really really funny i remember one of my parents say to me that like my desire to undergo hrt was probably brain damage from me being born six weeks premature it's really like the only time i've ever come out early as well given that this conversation was when i was 25. i wanted to ask you <laughs> In this vein, do you see yourself as making contributions to a repository of transgender cinema or do you see yourself more so as a filmmaker who just made a DC superhero parody and happened to be trans? I think kind of the latter. I've gone back and forth between both. I know when I started, I just wanted to make a genre movie and I wanted to make a genre movie about transness. There were various points in the middle of it, especially when we were writing it and coming up with some of those ideas that you mentioned, just like stuff that was like, should we put this in this movie? I never seen this in a movie before inappropriate there was a lot of that thankfully my co-writer Bree and I we would just yes and each other be like I think that's like a sign we should put it in if it hasn't been a part of this so I think there were these moments along the way like oh this has potential to be kind of a groundbreaking film in that way but then by the end of it, once we premiered it, sometimes the way people talk about it has returned me back to that place. Like, okay, I get it guys, I'm trans. I'm also a filmmaker. Like I knew I was a filmmaker before I knew I was a girl. So like maybe we could put that first in the bio, but at the same time, I try not to be cynical about it. I grew up in a world where like, there were no trans directors. There was the Wachowski sisters, but we didn't know until pretty late in their careers. If a trans girl comes out in the forest, does anyone know? I I see the importance of being visible as a trans filmmaker. The people that I identify with the most in the film world are just like genre dorks. It's interesting that you bring up <laughs> Yes and one of my favorite scenes in the film. There's a really visceral sense of embarrassment that you can really only understand if you've done stand up. What do you think the People's Joker says about humiliation and anxiety? These are really good questions. <laughs> I was processing humiliation and exploitation, both in terms of queer identity and art and comedy comedy without really even fully realizing it. I kind of saw that intersection there. I did drag for a while. That used to be kind of the only space where I could express my femininity, but it was always very monstrous and like ironic and detached. Even now, when I think back, even some of the stuff I ended up doing in The People's Joker, I'm just like, you're so pretty. Why are you doing this? There's a level of self-hate that I've used comedy to process and I've seen a lot of other trans people do that too. I also wanted to talk about discourse around some of the like adult swim shows that I've worked on. The amount of like about once a year, somebody on Twitter tries to cancel me for like exploiting David Liebehart. And I'm just like, David Liebehart is... Nobody is more happy than David Liebehart to be a performer. <laughs> that guy is the genuine multi-hyphenate, the most punk person I know, just the biggest fan of comedy. I wanted to talk about that, how we sort of remove people's agency when we talk about them, whether they are somebody like David, who's, you know, neurodivergent, is just a comedian. He's just a comedian that is in some cool, weird, abstract shit. The way people also talk about transness. We're either portrayed as monsters or fucking crime. Figures. There's no in between. That's a heavy crown to wear. I really do think of transness as an inherently political thing, but it's a political thing that I had no say in. I just wanted to match my body to the way that I felt inside. I didn't want to be a part of a counterculture, but I am and I'll do it. It's important now more than ever for all of us to be visible and proud and talking about this stuff. Speaking on the wider community there, what do you think is going on with white bisexuals? What was the question? 
What's going on with white bisexuals? What's going on with them? I have no idea. Something terrifying is happening. I'm almost afraid to comment on it. I've been pulled into the orbit of some of that stuff. Dangerous stuff. It's really weird. Dangerous stuff. It's really weird that we live in a time where there's queer fascists. I, I, they were there from day one. <laughs> like, aren't Rome? Let's be real. You turn the clock back. They were always there. But Hugo Boss. Hugo Boss is pretty mm. gay, too. The Nazi salute is just a, you know, but like slightly turned up a little internet world what the fuck are you guys doing align yourself with people that are actively trying to suppress our rights unfortunately that's just white people and i'm sorry for all of us we're you know i'm doing my best <laughs> apology yeah, accepted. i demand applause <laughs> thank you well if you demand i've got a i, I fear it will happen to be otherwise you know in the film <laughs> the people's joker there's this film of snl as the decaying corpse at the heart of American comedy. I'd like you to rank the following transphobic SNL skits from one, not funny, didn't laugh, to five, problematic fave. Okay. We've got the Eastro Max parody with Bill Hader, the Project Runway parody with Amy Perler, and then when Tina Fey called Paris Hilton, who was also hosting the- <laughs> Oh my God. I give Bill Hader a pass on really anything. God, whenever he gets asked, he's even about like Stefan. Oh yeah. yeah, Barry is a show about a straight white cis dude but resonated with me so much as somebody with PTSD has had to hide most of my life. I just feel bad for him anytime people ask him about Stefan. I can tell he feels really bad. So I'm gonna rank that as a problematic fave. I'm not gonna give Amy Poehler any passes but you know I love her. Amy if you're watching I forgive you. We all do because I speak for the entire trans community. Yeah, I especially do. Only now, because I heard what Vera said before, Mortal Enemy. As you edited on cinema for Tim Heidecker and Greg Turkington, were you well prepared to hear people's bad takes? Oh God, not really. I've been so embarrassed by how hypersensitive I've been. Honestly, thankfully, I haven't been super public about a lot of them. I'm embarrassed anytime I like come home and I'm talking to my partner and I'm like, somebody's complaining about the green screen again. Like, yeah, who fucking cares? Dart is subjective. It's funny too. Joker to complain about that. That's insane. Of all the things too to complain about, while I was making it, I knew I was making something that wasn't gonna be for everybody. And I also really see this as my penance for how much I've shit talk other filmmakers, especially Kevin Smith. I feel so bad about everything I've ever publicly said about Kevin Smith just because of the way I see some people talk about my movies now. Like, oh, that's exactly what I said about Jay and Silent Bob reboot. I'm sorry, Kevin. But this never is just my apology like, tour. Yeah, but his tweets though, he's too horny. Oh yeah, well, I'm on trans Twitter. Is there a too horny on Twitter? I need some water real quick, I'll be right back. Whoa, Vera walked out, oh my God. Who's your favorite biblical woman other than Britney Spears? Lilith, Adam's first wife, because she refused to be on top. She wanted to be on top. I just projected my own sexual preference onto a goddess for the record. Yeah, she's socially mobile. You once said tucking is for pussies. <laughs> Surely tucking is for penises. Yeah, but I assume somebody's probably had a pussy that's so big that they need to tuck it. Okay. I've seen some baggy ones. I've seen some Jinko jean style pussies that- Yeah, I fuck with I can tell them. Yeah. Let cisgender women tuck. Why are we- For real. Keeping this information? How dare <laughs> transfer forwards or the tucking noise? They stole the ass queen from us, so they might as well steal talking too. It's a circle. It just goes round and round and round. From Everything is Terrible to Bob Odenkirk, there was a lot of comedy veteran collaboration on this film. Does these people co-signing a film, which I think in many ways indicts the state of American comedy, mean that we need to go back to David Letman and the Dick Van Dyke show? Is the people's joke a reactionary? Is that the message? Wow. If somebody watches it and that's their takeaway, that is absolutely their right. Honestly, I do fucking love the Dick Van Dyke show. That wasn't intentional. People could watch Fight Club and think it's pro-nihilism. I love, com like, I hate comedy, but I think my hatred for it is because I'm toxically in love with it. I'm in an abusive relationship with comedy is the way I see it. It's why I go to therapy every day. Who's your favorite South Asian director? <laughs> could I get like a multiple choice option? No, we're 20% of the world. You can pick a name. Um, 
Let me get back to you. I used to do right. whippets, so I struggle with names and faces. I'll give you one. M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, fuck yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. It's so weird because, like, I just think of him as our modern Hitchcock, so I forget, like, where he's from. Of Hitchcock Indian was black and white, so he's just gray to you. Yeah, no. I'm neoliberal. I'm colorblind. I'm actually literally colorblind. Sometimes when I say that, I think people might interpret it as me saying, like, I don't see race, but I really just can't tell the difference between green and red. You can't see those red walls. I mean, I can see, it's why in the stuff I make, I really lean on saturation and vibrance because it's like kind of the only sh I can see. I know Nicholas Winding Refn is colorblind too, which would explain why his movies look like neon cube. And that's tone complimentary. I love his film. You wrote and later pulled an article for Queer Majority, which is run by a Bush supporting conservative that posts anti gender ideology think pieces in an Elon Musk style bid to neg his trans daughter. What's it like now being irredeemable? God, I'm so glad I get to address this. It's really just, if anything can be taken away from the fact that I wrote for Queer Majority, it's just that I've been overworked. I didn't have time to vet. And like, I don't know, I like saw queer in the title and I just assumed, oh, this is just gonna be a site I can share my story with. And it came from Bruce LaBruce, who was the guest editor that month. And he's like one of my favorite filmmakers. I think he didn't know either of the backstory. I've seen this since talked about it. Five different people, I swear. Yeah, like an email from someone. Oh, majority that sounds why would it be why would it be fake why would it be this elaborate scheme to deck his daughter right i think it's a bit crazy it's a psyop i know it upset a lot of people i asked them to pull the article and they refused they told me they did not want to they're not a conservative website they just present an even perspective of mm -hmm. all sides and then the fucking editor literally brought up please use all of this to me that gender ideology is like fascism we're just showing how the erasure of the distinction between sex and gender is actually very destructive to our community. I'm like, I've never met a fucking trans person that's trying to do that or a non-binary person that's trying to do that. If anybody said that at the queer function, you have to leave. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, it'd be fucking embarrassing. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. I mean, speaking of white bisexuals, that's... I'm hesitant to give them clicks, but it is a good article. I really worked hard on it. That's the real tragedy of it is I poured my heart out for a fascist smut rag. <laughs> There's your fucking clickbait title. I already saw your article in Forbes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Forbes, New York Times. I've been in it all, baby. <laughs> Rack them up. You won a primetime Emmy for editing Sasha Baron Cohen's Who is America? Can your fans yes. rest safe in the knowledge that you wholeheartedly endorse his racist and Zionist views? Yes, I also support his views on the Me Too movement. Uh, oh, wow. So, what are, I, no, don't, he's, I don't even know. What are his views on the Me Too movement? I will not, because he is one of the, for somebody that has pissed off so many people, like, legally, I'm scared of him litigiously. Google, it's fine, it's fine. You're Google, in enough. Uh, I'm not going to add to your legal trouble. <laughs> Sasha's, yeah. I mean, the heartbreaking thing is he really was, like, an influence on my work. And kind of just watching him descend into this madness, just, like, fucking boomer, neoliberal bullshit is really disgusting. I was already never going to work with him again just because he's a horrible boss as well. Anyway, learned a lot on that show. Can't wait for Borat 3. Do you know like the Ali G show? All of the stuff he did in the 90s? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like a character of a London brown and black person. And he got famous off of doing that in the UK. The hate was always there, but now that it's bottled into this culture war, he's now going after TikTok because uh, videos of Palestinians being blown up. It's a very much a dark ending for him. Yeah, and in many ways, it's probably just the beginning. Evil never dies to quote Donald Pleasant in Ooh. Halloween movies. Ooh. Similarly, as you edited Comedy Bang Bang, can your fans rest safe in the knowledge that you wholeheartedly endorse Weird Al? and his genre-bending approach to polka. Yes, and honestly, Weird Al, just the nicest human being that has ever yeah. walked to the earth. I love Weird Al so much. I really hope I get to work with him again someday. Just a delight, just a ray of light. And honestly, I hope she comes out one day. <laughs> Thank you so much for your no time. Comment. No comment. No <laughs> comment. Egg allegations for Weird Al, not confirmed. Yeah, I don't want to get caught in the Kurt Cobain trap. Oh, I love that. Called. Yeah, <laughs> always a good one. You just end up digging more and more on someone until you find something incredible. And then you're like, okay, can't be trans anymore. Yeah. Do you have a question for me? I don't. I don't. Uh, you know what? Actually, how do you sleep at night? How do how I do sleep, you sleep at night? In a big bed with my wife. That's good. These were the most, this was the most, I, I had a blast, but this was the most intense interview. I'm sweating so much. Like <laughs> that's kind of my vibe.
I'm letting this, joke this was a blast of, of YouTube. Yeah. Cool. The People's Joker is available in video on demand everywhere. Anything you'd like to shout out? I'm really getting into the monkeys lately. Ooh. A lot of their stuff is on YouTube. So Google the monkeys. Mike Nesmith from the monkeys has this quote that I can't stop thinking about, which is that there's no past, present, or future. There's just an eternal presence. It sends a shockwave through my body that one of the monkeys said that. And that it wasn't Mickey Dolan's. Anyway, now I'm making references that 70-year-olds get. And then I saw her face. Now I'm a believer. That's Rams, right? Oh, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Emotional labor. Hmm. Uh, emotional labor. <laughs>